Former assistant U.S. attorney David Weinstein from the Hinshaw Law Firm is here now to talk about this. And uh, let's disclose right up front that David worked under Alex Acosta at the Justice Department, but he did not work on this case. David, thanks a lot for being here. You're welcome. Uh, in your years as an attorney on both sides, I'm mm -hmm. sure you've seen a lot of plea deals. Mm -hmm. Would you consider this a sweetheart deal that Jeffrey Epstein got? At the time, in retrospect, it certainly now does look like a sweetheart deal, but at the time, there were factors that had to be considered. The age of the victims, whether or not they were willing to come forward and testify. These were victims who were a lot closer to 18 than they are now 12, 15 years later. There were allegations in terms of uh, intimidation that was being put. Some of these people were settling their cases. So the volume of the evidence that was available to go forward and prosecute him with is perhaps not the same as it is now. So at the time, it appeared to be a resolution that would have him labeled as a sex offender, registered as a sex offender, and it was believed he was going to have to serve some time in a state facility for the crimes that he committed under state law. And David, his accuser said they were never consulted about that plea deal. What rights did they have in that decision? So victims always have a right to be heard and to have input in the outcome of the case. There was a Victims' Rights Act that was passed that gives victims an even greater right now, both under the federal laws as well as under state laws, and it gives them the right to have more than just some input. You need to run the deal by them, especially in a case where in, with victims like this, they're underage victims, and they need to consult with both of their parents, guardians, and people who are going to give them advice about whether or not they should be agreeing to a deal. Well, that's, probably, that's why this was reopened in the first place, because a judge ruled that it was in violation of the victim's rights law. Uh, David, what about the Alex Acosta today tweeted that there's new evidence. There may be new evidence. If not, is this just trying Jeffrey um, Epstein on, on the same charges twice? Well, the indictment that was unsealed when he was presented in court yesterday, it involves the exact same acts that occurred, but acts that occurred in the Southern District of New York, not in the Southern District of Florida. So they're not the same acts, and the deferred prosecution agreement he entered into precluded anybody in the Southern District of Florida from bringing charges based on the crimes that occurred in the Southern District of Florida. So it may involve the same individuals, but these are acts that took place in New York, not in Florida. The second thing is what he pled guilty to was a state crime. Mm -hmm. A recent decision, U.S. First Gamble out of the Supreme Court says states, federal prosecution, separate. You can be prosecuted again for similar or same conduct by the federal government, even if you've been prosecuted by the state. So it's not everything all over again. There are some differences here. But yes, same victims involved. And in terms of additional evidence, there have been reports that during an execution of a search warrant at his home in New York, they uncovered pictures that they believed may be of underaged individuals. That is new evidence. That's not necessarily evidence they had down here. And if, in fact, he was in possession or downloaded or somehow transmitted, then yes, those are new charges. It would also depend when he did all of that. If he did it at some point after he had entered into his plea here in South Florida, that's also a violation of his deferred prosecution agreement. So all of that together is what's making this a new case and potentially with new information. And David, last question. A bail hearing is on Thursday. Do you think he'll get any? I don't think he's going to see the outside of the detention center for a very long time. Wow. He'll be appearing in khakis or dark blues for a while. Even if the judge agrees there might be some bond that's reasonable, the government's going to appeal that up to the Court of Appeals. And based on the evidence that they presented in their motion for pretrial detention, it's a fairly strong case, both with risk of flight and danger to the community. So I think it'll be a while before he gets out. And we may not even get a decision on Thursday because that's when papers are due to be filed. There's still going to be yet another hearing before Judge Berman. In the interim, he's going to stay in that uh, federal lockup in New York. David, yeah, thank yes, you very much. Thank David Weinstein much. from the Hinshaw Law Firm joining us. And stay with CBS 4 News on air and online at CBSMiami.com for the latest developments on the indictment of Jeffrey Epstein.